With all the search and buy sites out there, you think that finding an outstanding user experience would be a piece of cake. Here with a new way to search for travel online is Adam Goldstein of Hipmunk. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Goldstein. This is Steve Huffman, and we're the founders of Hipmunk, a new flight meta search site. Now, you might be wondering, why would anyone in their right mind start a new flight search site? The answer is very simple. Flight search, even a decade or more into it, is still an agonizing process. But a lot of people today have been telling you that. Let me give you some examples. The first example is one of my favorites. The first question I have when I see this checkbox on one of the largest OTAs is, why does this checkbox even exist? And then the second question that I have is, if they're going to put this checkbox there, why isn't it checked by default? OK, so clearly, there's some work to be done. Another example would be when you go to another meta search site, you see this nice, clean presentation of results. And then you realize you're only on the first of 52 pages of results. OK, so this could be improved too. Now let me do an experiment with the audience. On this next page, this next slide, I'm going to show you a result from an OTA. And I want you, in the one second that I show this on the screen, to figure out what the price of this trip is. OK, that was really quick. Let's try it again this time for two seconds. OK, so most of you, I'm imagining, thought that the price was $129. But in fact, the price is $150. This travel agency is just deliberately burying the lead here to make it seem like this trip is cheaper than it actually is. So we think that's a little bit deceptive, and so we don't do that. But beyond that, I think that the fundamental problem that these sites have is that they don't use their space efficiently. I mean, the, above the fold-on kayak, look at the space that's actually occupied by useful results. This is less than a third of the page, and there are six results in this space. And I'm actually being charitable because the first result is actually an ad that's made to look like a result. You look at a site like uh, Travelocity, less than 20% of that above the fold space is being used with useful data, with two results. So let's look at Hipmunk. With Hipmunk, we take up 82% of that same window with useful results, and that comes out to 23 results. And the point here is that with that much of the screen taken up with useful results, you can suddenly understand what the trade-offs are between the different options, because you see so many of them on a single screen. So now let me show you some, some more of our features in a live demo. So here is a set of Hipmunk flight results. And the first thing that you'll notice here is that this is laid out completely differently than any of the OTAs or meta search sites out there. This is essentially a Gantt chart for flights. So you can see easily at a glance what the non-stop options are, because they're a single colored bar, and what the connections are, because those have a gap where the connection city is. Now, there are a few things here that I think are cool. The first thing to note is that we don't show you the vast majority of results on this page. What Steve is hovering over here is a button to show five flights that are worse than this nonstop jet blue flight. So these are all flights, take note, that leave earlier, arrive later, have more connections, are on the same airline, and cost more money. And yet all of our competitors, including many of the ones sitting in this room, would display these results as if they were equally valid choices and leave the work up to you to figure out whether it's true or not. So we hide these by default, and that's how we manage to fit all of the results that you would care about on a single page. The next thing that we do is we don't just blindly sort by price. We're the only site that I'm aware of, actually, where we sort by what we call agony, which is a combination of price, duration, and number of stops. So you'll note here that the US Airways option, about seven or eight down the page, is the cheapest. It's $310. But for $21 more, you can get a nonstop, and we think that that's just sort of a slam dunk if your time is worth 
more than minimum wage. Now, beyond that, though, if you don't like that, if you're, if you're unemployed, say, and your time is worth literally zero dollars, you can sort by price instead. And it's instant, right? You can instantly resort this way, or by departure time. Now you get this nice cascade of flights over the course of the day, and you can just scroll to see how they go over the rest of the day. So let's go back to agony for a second. One of the things that we've learned is that people have certain constraints on what time of day they can fly. Now, fortunately, we've built in these sliders to actually cut off flights that fall outside of your de desired departure and arrival times. So when Steve lets go, all the flights outside will be cut off instantly. And he can do the same thing on the arrival time. So here you have only the flights that you want, and you can resort them the same way that you've done before. And when you're done, if you want, you can just show all of the results, like this, and you're back to where you started. Now, the final thing that's, that's cool here is that we recognize that users will do multiple searches, often in the same session, before deciding whether to book a ticket. And so we let you open up multiple tabs in the same window so that you can compare different dates or different airports or different trips altogether within the same window. So we think that these are some pretty compelling features. Now let's go back to the slideshow. Are users really like this? Are users, in fact, like this so much that they give us free stuff without us asking for it? The first week that we were out, someone made his, his own version of our logo just because he thought it was cool. A few weeks ago, someone made an entire animated video himself for free about how to use Hipmunk and then sent it to us saying, hey, check this out, I think it's cool. And even one person made a stuffed animal version of our Chipmunk logo. <laughs> and the question that this raised in my mind was, when was the last time that anyone was so fanatical that they made a stuffed kayak? <laughs> okay. So all, all joking aside, it's very easy to come up here. It's very easy to come up here and say, hey, look at us. People think this is cool. But the question for a savvy audience is, are people actually making purchases? And the answer, fortunately, is yes. Every month, and by every, I mean the three months that we've been in existence, <laughs> we refer millions of dollars in successful bookings. And that's without really any advertising budget whatsoever. The press and our users are our advertisers. And they love Hipmunk so much that they tell all their friends about it for free. But then you think, well, what's a, what's a uh, startup like us to do with money? And the only sensible answer, which I'm happy to announce for the first time today, is sign an agreement with ITA software. So the significance of this is several fold. But most importantly, what this means is that going forward, we're going to be trying to compete on price with everyone else. And as price parity begins to permeate this industry, our comparative advantage in user experience becomes even more salient. In a world in which everyone has the same fares and availability, the best way to get people to stick around is to build something that they enjoy using. So what have I shown you today? I've shown you, firstly, we've got a service that's really cool. We think that people will find it much easier to use this service to find their flights than anything that's come before it. But beyond that, users have fallen in love with it only in three months. And if there's one thing that today's social environment says, if there's one thing that today's young generation like us says, it's that they're tired of being advertised to and treated like objects. They want an experience, not just an opportunity to buy tickets. And we think we've built that. Thanks very much. Just when I thought I'd seen it all in air shopping, you come up with something new. You do win the award for the best logo. Thanks. Okay. Um, you talked about uh, relationship with ITA. That mm -hmm. means you have source content for search. How about for booking? Uh, so for booking right now, we go mostly through orbits. Um, but we're looking to make direct deals with as many airlines as we can so that our customers can book on their websites. 
as the airlines start providing their content directly, as American Airlines has threatened to do, uh, how will that affect your model? Uh, that's a good question. You know, our, our goal is to get the best possible data that we can. Um, so we'll do whatever it takes to get that. The, uh, the other uh, monkey wrench the airlines are putting in the works are the pre-sale of ancillary content, uh, check bags, uh, upgrades, and so on. Do uh, you have any plans to add that into your UI? Not immediate plans, although it's something that we find uh, a, a good opportunity as well. How are you going to protect your intellectual property and keep competitors from uh, imitating you? Sure. So many of the features that I showed today, things like uh, hiding flights automatically, things like multiple searches in a single window, those are all things that we've either filed or are in the process of filing patents for. And beyond that, we think that we're coming from a different perspective than our competitors are. I just don't see a world in which the big OTAs, the big meta search sites, get rid of advertising. We're approaching it from the perspective of purely user focus. So if they try to copy us, uh, we think they won't be able to do as good of a job. We have a question from the audience asking if you could elaborate on your deal with ITA. Um, well, there's going to be a press release outside uh, that's going to have a lot more details, but I'll say it's a deal to get QPX data, um, and we're looking to make as most of that the, the most of that information that we can. Okay, thank you.